So, this video is basically meant to show you the average process I go through in order to create the most accurate and in-scale tanks. I've been making tanks since late 2018, so I think I do have some valid experience. Today, I'll be showing you how I made the Soviet T-55 MBT, which, if you haven't seen the video, was uploaded last week, if you didn't know. To start, the first process I go through is the chassis. Basically, it is the base of the tank, with the driving motors and tracks. Here is one of the sides of the tracks. I have not made the second half, and that will come shortly. An extremely important aspect of making a large RC tank out of LEGO is making it extremely durable and strong. It needs to carry the entire body weight, as well as driving over obstacles. I learned this the hard way, sadly. If you look at my second project, the IS-3, its entire rear section either falls off most of the time, or is barely attached. That is why the tank needs to be structurally sound. Next, I have attached the two halves together. This pretty much finishes off the tank chassis, and allows me to attach the Boa's control system. This means I get to remotely control my tanks from over 30 meters away, instead of the 3 meters from LEGO IR receivers. By the way, this isn't a paid promotion or advertisement, just thought I'd clear that up. After the completed chassis, I add the roof. This basically houses two motors for the elevation and traverse of the gun and turret. The roof makes the tank very secure and completes the main superstructure of the vehicle. On this particular tank, I also fitted a fake V6 engine. I also added fenders at this point, and it gives me a basic understanding of the size of the tank. The front and rear plates are also added for the hull. Now, I don't usually add plating to the front plate, as it is fine with just a single Technic plate. The next stage of the build is plating the bodywork. This is basically placing pins on the bodywork and then covering the holes with the plates. Doing this process pretty much rounds off the basic shape of the hull, and all that remains for that specific area is the details and other bits and bobs to go on the hull. I've also added a small flap where I can access the engine bay, which is a nice and handy feature, especially as I don't have to tip the tank on its side just to turn it on. And I just have to flip up a hatch to switch it on. The final stage of the bodywork is the turret. On this example, a Soviet T-55A, it is basically an upturned super wall. This was quite hard to achieve, with different angles. I also forgot to take any pictures or videos of the turret, so these pictures of this Leopard 1A4 will do. As you can see, there is a Technic section in the middle, with small beans heading out towards the side of the plates of the turret. In this T-55's case, the turret's curve was made out of overlapping plates to create a smooth curve. I first used this technique on my Tiger 2, and I've also used it on my M26 series. This here is the finished product, a detailed T55A with few functions. This whole process took around a week to complete, and around 14 hours in total. This script that I've written had probably take around 1 hour to complete, and around 700 words. The average script takes 2-3 to three hours, as there is quite a lot of researching going on, and I can't just pull true facts out of my head. There needs to be some planning going on. So, this pretty much rounds off the entire process, before I destroy the tank and make a new one. In this case, I kept the T55A, modified it, and made it into a T55AM1, which then got destroyed and turned into a state-of-the-art modern main battle tank, which will remain a mystery for now. If you want to be notified on when the next video will come out, then subscribe and turn on the notification bell, so you won't miss this rather exciting modern MBT. That's all from me today, and I'll see you next week. Ta-da!